Welcome back to our channel, folks. I am EcoBuilding, and on today's video, we're going to shop for and build a PC from the ground up. For anything that may have missed in the video or for extra tips, please check the video description. Comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Here on YouTube, there are thousands of videos on how to build a PC, but they really don't actually show you how to shop to build the PC. They don't show you how they chose those parts. They just say, here's the board, CPU, RAM, power supply, case, we're building, that's it. So in this video, I will show you how to shop for those components. And then at the end of this video, we're going to actually build the PC in this case. So before you start shopping for your components of the PC, you kind of want to have an idea on its intended purpose, its use case scenario. Why are you using this PC? If you're gaming, you're going to want a strong CPU and a strong GPU. But even then, depending on what games you play, you may not need a strong CPU or a strong GPU. If you're playing games like City Skylines or Grand Theft Auto V, you want a strong CPU and a strong GPU. But if you're playing Fortnite or Diablo or Diablo 2 or maybe Diablo 3, or you may, maybe you're playing Apex Legends or you're playing Rocket League, you don't really need a strong CPU and you don't need a strong GPU. You just, maybe an entry level GPU would do just fine. Maybe you're not gaming. Maybe you're gonna build a Plex server for your home. Well, there you don't even need a GPU because it can be a headless PC, which is a PC without a monitor on it. And you would only need a CPU strong enough to do how many streams that you want to stream. So if you need one stream at 1080p or one stream at 4K, you're gonna need like a mid-range processor. Or maybe the PC you want to build is from productivity like content creation. Maybe you use Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. Or maybe you just use Photoshop. If you use Premiere, that PC was going to use, or Premiere utilizes Intel's QuickSync, where DaVinci Resolve utilizes GPUs from NVIDIA and from AMD to do the video rendering. Or maybe the, key, the PC is going to be for a home theater PC. And home theater PCs are very small, very low powered, and most importantly, very, very quiet. In each one of those scenarios, they require, can utilize different types of hardware. Like the home theater PC might utilize a sound card so that you have a way to transport the lossless audio off your Blu-ray output to your home theater system. Something that a gaming PC doesn't really need a sound card. You can just use the onboard audio. So once we have the scenario down of why we want to build our PC, then we go shopping for the parts. Now in this video and my example is I'm replacing my surveillance PC that I've had for the last four years. And it's on a dead end FM2 AMD platform. So now is the time that we are going to go and upgrade it into this. And now we move on to the shopping of our PC parts. What parts we put in here? That's what we're gonna do now. Now there's several places you can go and shop for PC parts. You've got Amazon, you've got Newegg, you've got Best Buy. In some cases, you can probably go to Walmart or Target. But if you live near one, I would recommend Micro Center. So on your screen, you've got shown two windows here. These are both from Micro Center, and I chose Micro Center because they have bundles, and you really can't beat the bundle. That, and they price match Newegg. The problem with Amazon is sometimes Amazon isn't the one selling the item. It's a third-party seller, and you might get gypped on pricing, per se. So we've got two windows over here. We're gonna have, I wonder why they're showing me different ads. That's kind of, oh. We're like on ad three. Okay, so we have two windows, and we're gonna do an AMD build over here, and we're gonna do a Intel build right here on the right. 
So let's start with AMD. So we're gonna to go to computer parts here and we're gonna need, see they have Intel and AMD motherboard bundles. So let's start with the bundle. I also don't have a budget put together for this because I already have an idea of what these components cost. So I'm already thinking around like 600 bucks, maybe less than that for what we're gonna do. And I don't think Ryzen 3 right now is something that we need. These are way out of my price range. This is a 27, uh, so 3800X. That's out of my price range. You can build a whole PC for practically 500 bucks. So let's get out of third gen. So let's look at, oh, they have second gen on here. Whoa, we've got a 2700, which is eight cores, 16 threads. Now, mind you, the current CPU that we have is four cores, and that's it, and four threads. So this is a big jump. Um, so it looks like we're just saving 20 bucks off whatever the board is. We have 2600. So we have a 2600 and we have a 2700. Now this is last generation Ryzen, but this is 2019. This is still work. It's not like this platform is outdated. And in the future, if I want to upgrade this security PC even further, once I have this board, I can then go get an AMD Ryzen 3600, you know, or Ryzen third gen, and put it back on whatever board I choose here. So let's look at what we have for pricing. Okay, so we've got an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 with a stock cooler, and it's got a B450M Pro AM4 motherboard. Now the M means it's micro ATX. So if you look at this picture, it's a small board compared to the one right here to the left of it, it's a full-size ATX board. So this comes down to how much, what kind of board you really want. These are all 2600 CPU, you just have different features on the board. So 169 and we get a ASRock board, but if you look up here for let's say 40 bucks more, that would be 40 bucks more, you get a 2700, eight core, 16 thread CPU with the same board for $210. So this just comes down to, do you want a better CPU? I think this is a six core and I think this is an eight core. Both have hyper threading. This is an X, so this means I can overclock this if I want to. So let's start with this package right here. So we're gonna add that to our cart and we need more items. We still need our RAM, we still need a power supply and we still need storage because this is my surveillance PC. So we're going to go continue shopping. Back to our computer parts, we need memory. So let's look at what memory we have. Oh, my laptop just spooled up on me. But before we do memory, we need to look at our board. So we're going to look at our cart, let it load. So we need to see what this board is. So we know what memory to get. So we're going to click specs. We're going to come down here and you're going to see you've got memory type and memory speed. And there's four slots. So you can support 64 gigs in dual channel. You always want to be in dual channel no matter what you're doing, no matter what your use case scenario is, always pick dual channel. Now we've got DDR 21, 24, 26, 67, and then you can overclock it to like 3200. So let's look at RAM. We need DDR4. ECC memory, the DDR4 ECC is error correction memory. I believe Ryzen platform supports it. Actually, does this mem ECC memory support it? Oh, look at that. Unbuffered memory supported and non ECC memory supported. ECC memory is more on server grade, it's error correction memory. For the purposes of this video, or for what I'm doing, I don't need ECC. So we're going to go DDR4. And then we're going to go to see what memory we have, what kind of kits. So if we looked at our baseline, the current PC was only using six gigabytes of data. So that means, or six gigabytes of RAM, not data. So we can look at an eight gig pack, which is two by four. So let's pick the two by four. So my mouse dies on me. So let's pick the two by four, but we wanna see how much a two by eight 16 gig kit is going to be. Let's pick those two kits. And that's what we're presented with. Now, when shopping for memory, there's one other thing you wanna look into, and that is your chaos latency. The lower the number, generally, the better the RAM. 
The higher the, the faster the RAM, the lower the number. Generally, the higher the cache latency, the slower the RAM, per se. So let's look and see what we have for cache 15. We've got, that's out of our budget, $49, $79, $72, and $79. And those are all 16 gig, two by eight kits. Actually, this one is an eight gig. I'm going to assume it's a four by two, which is two four gig strips. This is 16 gigs, and that's gonna be 16 gigs. So we're at 50 bucks for an eight gig kit, two by four, or we're at $72. Oh, here's a four gig, four by gig kit, four, two by four gig kit as well for 40 bucks. But 30 more dollars, we get twice as much memory. So even if you bought two of these to have 16 gigs and have all four po um, slots populated, you'd still be spending $70. So actually you'd be spending more. It'd be cheap to go with this one. So let's click on this and see what our specs are. So when you're looking at memory, you're looking at 2400 memory speed. Memory speed in megahertz is DDR3000. Does this board support 2400? It does, right there is 2400. So this memory is gonna work in this board. And it's non-ECC, non which is fine. And it's a two um, by desktop memory module, which means there's two modules. Let's go back one screen and see what this one was for $40. We have 2400, so it's the same RAM. It's eight gigs, two by four, and it's 2400. So we would be just fine picking either kit. Now on your motherboard spec sheet, sometimes they will specify which RAM that they will support. Um, I don't think Micro Center is going to list that. So we're just going to go back a screen and we are going to pick this kit. No, we don't need protection play. So we have our CPU, motherboard, we have our RAM. Continue shopping. We need a power supply. Now this computer is gonna be on 24 seven. So when you shop power supplies, you wanna look at wattage, um, like how much wattage you're gonna be putting in the system. We don't have a dedicated video card, a high-end dedicated video card, and we don't have a high-end CPU per se. I think the Ryzen, seven is like 100 watts but before we figure out the wattage we want it to be a very efficient power supply so we have titanium and platinum the two best certifications you can get how much is the titanium oh my god go back go back go back $700 650 for a power supply okay go back go back uncheck that box okay so how much is platinum Jesus Christ, these are still $200 for a power supply? Um, oh, there's $100. Oh, it's refurbished though. Um, say what you will about refurbished, it may or may not work. So the next level down is gonna be gold. So let's look at gold. And then we're gonna shop based on price. How cheap can we go? We have an EVGA 650 modular power supply. Modular is pretty good which means that all the cables plug into the power supply. You only plug in cables that you actually need. Seasonic, fully modular, it's a gold. So they're both 650, they're both 80 plus. Um, Seasonic's pretty good, I've used them in the past. We've got, I've never heard of power spec, but the price difference of 10 bucks, power spec versus EVGA. I'm gonna go with the EVGA at the moment. Let's see what else we have. Here's another power spec. You also got to kind of wonder, oh, this isn't, that, that's fully modular. This one's probably partially modular, but it's still like 20 bucks. Eh, what else? We have Corsair, the EVJ 750. We don't really need a 750. Corsair 650X, which is a 650 watt power supply. Another Seasonic. Thermal take, I've used those with RGB 750 modular power supply with RGB lighting. If you want RGB, I guess you can go RGB, but RGB doesn't matter to me. We have, a lot of these are like way out of the price range that I want to spend on the power supply. And there's a whole other page. 
that they're probably gonna go up in price. But let's see what they got. Up oh, 119, 650, semi-modular. The semi-modular is more expensive than the fully modular. The semi-modular should be cheaper than the fully modular. So we're still looking. These prices look a little, oh, there's another Corsair. Gold fully modular for 109. Um, I know EVGA, so I'm gonna pick the EVGA. Proceed to our cart. So we have our CPU and board. We have a RAM, we have a power supply. We need one more item and that's gonna be storage. So let's continue shopping. And we need storage. So we're gonna look for an SSD because at this point SSDs are pretty much calm down pretty decently in price. And we don't really need a big SSD because this is only for the OS. So let's look for like a 150 to 250 gig SSD. Whoa, what can we get? We got some good deals here. We got 25 bucks, $31. Now these are SATA based. In this price range, that's all they're gonna be. Ooh, we have an M.2, Kingston, 250 gig SSD. Does this board have a uh, M.2? Oh, right there, uh-oh, it says Ultra. So right here's the M.2 slot and it says Ultra. I think Ultra's only gonna work with NVMe. Do we have any other slots on this board? It's, is this one right here? Yeah, right here's another slot. So here's another M.2 slot. Now this slot probably utilizes one, this is gonna work. So this slot's probably gonna utilize one of these SATA lanes right here. So as long as this is a SATA slot, a slot and not an MVME only, which it shouldn't be, let's look at our specs. We've got video, we don't really need, video only if you have an AMD um, APU that you're gonna put in there, like a 3400G or a 2400G, then this board would work with that as well. We have M.2 port, so this is the key type, SATA Express, M.2 socket, three key, um, SATA four gigs, and this is your support of if you do RAID or not. RAID zero, RAID one, and RAID 10. But it does do M.2 doesn't tell me how many ports there are. Oh, there's two M.2 ports for SATA Express, but it says they're both SATA Express. I'm wondering. At any rate, let's look at this drive real quick. And we're looking at a dead mouse again. Why does my mouse keep wanting to die? Okay, so we're looking, and what we're looking for on this drive is the form factor, M.2 2280. And that's pretty much the length of the actual drive. And then you have different keys right here. This is um, a SATA based, it's not NVMe, but it's a 2280. Does this support 2280? Sure does, right there. Okay, so we have our drive. And then the last thing that we need, because this is Blue Iris, and we're gonna be upgrading, is I need a purple, a hard drive for Blue Iris to record all of its video to. So now we're gonna go to internal hard drives. And I, I've heard that Western Digital is pretty good. So let's look for Western Digital. Western Digital, can I shop by brand? Nope, nope, nope. Packaging, form factor, capacity. What in the world? Advanced, what in the world? Okay, brand, Western Digital. Well, WD. So WD is supposed to be pretty good. And then they have WD laptop which we don't need laptop so we can probably go over here to uh notebook network attack storage desktop so let's look at desktop right here wd purple surveillance six terabytes i don't need those six terabytes can i shop just for can i shop based on color apparently not so purple surveillance one terabyte 5400 one terabyte Two terabytes at 7,200. Whoa, 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 what do we have here? Let's look at two terabytes. Oh, that's why, I'm only 5,400 RPM. Hmm. So there's two drives right here, and they're both two terabytes, but one spins faster than the other one. Usually the one that spins faster has a faster read and write time better performance generally 
um, but 5400 for this purposes probably isn't going to be that bad. Media transfer rates up to 154 megabytes. I believe the, media, the most media that we were doing on that hard drive at the current time was like 5 or 50 megabytes, if that. So I think we'll be okay with this drive. And I don't think it's worth an extra $30 to go to a hundred or go to a set of 200 RPM hard drive. But we can look and see what is the next $30 going to give us if we choose this route. And it's going to give us up to 600 megabytes per transfer rate. What? Really? If that's not really confusing. Okay, so media transfer, this says up to 145. The other one's up to 600. If you have more, more cameras than what I have, probably want to go that route. So let's add that to the card. No, no, we don't need no protection. So we proceed to our card, and for our AMD build, we're at $541 out the door. We have our CPU and motherboard, we have a RAM, power supply, we have storage, both for the OS and for our Western, or for our surveillance. So that's $500. Now there's a caveat here. AMD does not have an integrated GPU because this is a Ryzen chip. That's where my 750 Ti is gonna come in that I'm going to reuse from an old PC. Otherwise, if you don't have a GPU laying around, you're gonna have to add more money to this build to get the GPU, unless you have one laying around. There's also no case because we're using this case right here. And there's also no operating system, no Windows 10 right here, because you don't really need when to purchase Windows 10. You can just get the media creation tool, you'll download it and you'll have a watermark in the lower right, uh, lower right corner of your screen. We'll go through that as we build this PC. But I have those two HP Elite desktops I mentioned earlier in the video. Well, if I'm not using one, I'm gonna see if I can pull the Windows 10 Pro key off that and put it to the new PC. With that out of the way, let's jump to the right side of the screen and do the same build with Intel. So we're gonna do Intel motherboard and see what they have for bundles. We don't need a 9900K, ouch. We don't need a 9700K. How about a 9600K? And we're looking at an i5-9600. Now, if you do this 99-i5-9400F, uh, the F does not have a GPU in it. Does not have a GPU. So depending on your use case scenario, if you need a GPU or an integrated one, you're gonna wanna stick here. If you need a GPU and you don't have one laying around, and you don't wanna spend more money, you're gonna be in this budget right here. So an i5-9600K, six cores six threads the shitty thing with intel is anything below the i9 no longer has hyperthread so all these like this case unlocked i think this is just eight cores eight threads i think this is six core six thread versus i think this is eight core 16 thread i don't remember i haven't seen an i9 i lost track but um, we're going to stick within this budget. And then down here, it's going to be the same CPU, just different boards. You want a Z390 chipset because Z Z390 is pretty much your overclocking chipset, I do believe. The M donation is for the micro ATX board. So the cheapest one here is going to be this one. So we're going to shop at $279. And then the rest of this build is pretty much just adding the same parts that we had over here, over to here. And that is just by doing our memory, what memory do we have? Um, DDR3000, DDR4-3000. So we want DDR4. Another thing that's kind of like note is if we go back to our Intel chipset, we click on our board and we go over here and we look at our specs. This board, Intel board, um, under memory, oh, it does support ECC memory. I did not know that. Um, we still have to do DDR2400, okay, so we can look for continue shopping, we want DDR4, 2400 was the memory that we had, and let's look for that same 
Rip Jaws kit that we had, which... Why am I not seeing it? That's a little on the... Oh, DDO 3000. Let's look at the DDO 3000. Where's the kit that we had? Here it is. So we have the same kit. So we add that to our cart. No protection plan. And we need to continue shopping. Proceed to our cart. So over here, and here's our price difference. So this is an AMD build, $541. Don't forget, we do not have a GPU on this side. And over here is $616. And this has an integrated GPU into the chip. So since I already have the, a GPU laying around like this one, I'm going to choose the AMD build spend the $500 and save myself some money. Now I know I said build this to use case scenario and I use Blue Iris and if you look at the Blue Iris community, they're all about using the Intel CPUs. But that's $600. Can't go to eBay and they recommend 932. So with all of our parts here, let's bring you in a little closer and we'll assemble this entire PC. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to unpack our board. Which is we just take it out of the box easily. It's going to come instructions like how to populate your RAM. It's going to come with two very, very, very small screws. Don't lose these. These are for your M.2 uh, drives. SATA cable, in case you have a SATA hard drive, which we will have one for our drive, for our hard drive, so we're going to need to use this. Oh my god, how thick of a manual do you think you need? They still make driver disc for motherboards? I didn't know that. Alright, and then we have our IO shield. Now, if you have a more premium board you have a higher end board like a 470 or maybe a 570 chipset you won't have a dust shield you won't have a IO shield not dust shield your IO shield will be incorporated on the motherboard itself so let's pull out our motherboard now I like to use the motherboard tray of the box as a place to build my computer assemble it before we put it over here into the case. Because once you put everything in the case, if something doesn't post, then it becomes a real pain in the ass to tear everything back apart. So we're gonna pull this out very carefully. This is an anti-static bag, and there are some people who will say that you use the motherboard on top of this bag and put the bag on the uh, container that it came in. But then there's people that will say that this anti-static bag is only anti-static on the inside and not the outside, I don't know. This does have a foam, a foam uh, pad down here, so we're going to use that. We're going to gently pull this out and set our motherboard down. Now the way you're looking at this, this is going to be your left, this is going to be your right. We have our four dim slots right here. This is dual channel. We have our power delivery for the whole board. We have a power delivery up here for our CPU. And these are our two express lanes, our PCI express lanes for video cards. And we have a PCI express lane down here. Here's a quick tip that you could use when you look at future boards. You may assume that these two lanes are both PCI express 16, but they're not. And to find out, you could read the manual or you can carefully flip your board over and what you're going to see is if you see all the solder joints like this 
this is a full-size PCI Express 16 lane. This is a by one lane, which probably puts this one maybe a by four or a by eight. Actually, it looks like a by, it might be a by eight lane. So if we're running this board in Crossfire or SLI with two GPUs, they're both not gonna be a full 16 Express lanes, if that may or may not matter to you. So we're gonna first put our CPU in. Now this is an AMD CPU, so this is a PGA CPU. So all the pins are on the CPU. But if you have an, L an Intel CPU, then your pins are gonna be on the actual socket itself. And you're gonna have a little cover that's over that socket that you're gonna to wanna to remove when you put the CPU in. We don't have to worry about that. Open our knife. We're gonna very carefully open our 2700X like so. Um, you also probably want to have an ESD strap connected to you and whatever um, surface you're working on. You want to make sure you don't have any static electricity because static electricity will destroy your stuff. I am grounded underneath the table. I have a strap grounded out to uh, an outlet, a ground per se. So let's open our CPU. This giant box is our Wraith cooler. One cool thing about AMD is they do include the cooler with their CPUs. And here is our beloved Ryzen CPU. Now, we're gonna take this pin right here, this arm, we're gonna push this arm back. Make sure it's all the way back. We're gonna open our CPU if I can figure out how to open this box. We're gonna pop this CPU open. We're gonna very carefully pull this CPU out. And as you can see, those are the pins for the CPU. Don't touch them. Don't drop the CPU, because you don't wanna bend these pins. Now, on the front of the CPU, in the lower on your left corner here, you're gonna see a triangle right where my nail's at. You may not see it, but it'll be right there. You wanna match that triangle up with what's on the CPU socket itself. That tells you how the CPU goes in. This is zero insertion force. The CPU should drop in by itself. No snapping, no force, no nothing. Make sure you line those up. It only goes in one way. If you take this out and you try to put it in this way, the CPU won't go in. So we're gonna try and put it in that way. Now our CPU's in. And now we push this arm down and we're done. Uh, a side tip, when you go to remove your CPU with this Ryzen, see how this arm is not back all the way? You want it to come back and you want to hear a click. Once you hear the click, you can then freely move, remove your CPU. So we're going to put that back in there. We're going to put that down like that. We have our CPU installed. With that installed, we now can install our heatsink. Now, if you're using the heatsink that came in the box, it's just going to clip to these two brackets that are right where my fingers are. If you're not going to use the included cooler, you're going to use an aftermarket cooler or a third-party cooler. You're going to remove these two brackets and its bracket on the back. And you're going to replace these two brackets and the bracket on the back with the hardware that had came with your cooler that you chose to use. Um, and maybe you have an AIO cooler instead, which has a little pump right here, like an all-in-one liquid cooler. That will have its own mounting hardware. But for our purpose, we're going to use the cooler that came with our CPU. This bitch is huge. That's a huge cooler. Um, with these coolers, if I get this off, there is thermal paste, which is what this is. This thermal paste is already pre-applied. So you won't have to worry about buying any thermal paste if you're using the stock cooler. If you're going the Intel route or you're going to utilize an aftermarket heatsink, 
that heat sink may or may not come with pre-applied thermal paste. So to install this, we need to figure out how we want to orient this. Unless we have OCD, you may or may not care where this AMD bracket sits. I kind of do. So this is the top of the board. This is the bottom of the board. And I can't put this in this way because right here is the clip and the clips are here and here. So it's going to either go this way or it's going to go this way. We're going to put it in this way. This is how we're going to put ours in. This cabling is going to go into a PDM fan header that sits up here at the top. And if you look at the bottom of this, there's two ports. Those are for the RGB. One's a USB and one's an RGB header. And thankfully down here at the bottom, this board has an RGB header. Although I'm not sure if you need software to actually utilize that. So to set this on there, we're gonna set it on this CPU. And I always try to like get one of the sides of these clips on one of these. I try to get one side clip on is what I try to do. Because it can be a pain in the ass if you don't do it. Then you set the CPU down and then you have to work on the other side, the side that you can't see. It's gonna need a little bit of force. It helps if you turn it around too. There, so I got both sides in. All right, so as you can see, there's arm right here. There's a clip right at the end of my index finger. And there's one right here too in the back. See this clip? Once you have them installed, you then take this arm and it was over here. You do 180 degrees and put it over here. It's gonna take some force because you're pushing this CPU down, this cooler down on the CPU. So. This is how um, you engage the locking mechanism so this cooler doesn't fall off. So this arm right here, it starts over here. You're gonna push it back 180 degrees and push down. It's gonna take some force, don't be scared, but make sure your clips are locked in too. Your side, make sure these are in their little clips down there at the bottom as well when you do that. So then to remove this, you just take this arm and you lift up and go 180 degrees back this way, and that frees the cooler. So now we have our cooler installed. Makes a handy handle too. We have this cable right here. Right here, I'll get a close up of this. It's gonna say CPU fan pin. That's where we're going to put our cable. It only goes on there one way. There's also a pump header here if you have an all-in-one all liquid cooler. But there's where our cable goes for our CPU cooler. Now our cooler's installed. So the back here where these two rubber mats are, or these rubber flaps, you've got two cables right here. One's a four pin RGB addressable header. And the other one is gonna be a USB header. You can only use one of these at a time. You can't use them both. This has an, this board has an RGB header down here. So we're gonna use that. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference. I personally don't care for RGB, but we're gonna use it anyway. And then you just take this flap off that matches the one, the cable that you're using. See this little flap right there? So you just take the one off that matches what you're using. We're using the four pin. So we took the four pin off. It does go in there one way. Or maybe it doesn't matter. Nope, it didn't matter. Okay. And then this end of the cable goes down here where our RGB header is. And it should say RGB. And then you just push this straight down. Now you're going to have some kind of like cable management you probably want to do. Because you might have a GPU that's going to sit right here. So it's going to go up and over that. So we're going to wait to install that down there. Now we're going to put a RAM in. This is dual channel RAM. So we're going to populate every other slot. But we only have 16 gigs. And do I need a knife to open this? No. Nope. Yay. So 
So you just remove your ram carefully. Don't bend it, don't break it. Be patient with it. Although millennials probably don't have patience th this day and age. Why is this knight not coming out? What the hell am I missing? Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we have our RAM modules and you're gonna see on the end of them, there's these clips right where my nails at. There's gonna be clips, there's gonna be holes right there. Those holes match up with the dim slots right here. I guess this board only has one side that pushes back. The other side don't. Now there's a notch right here in the middle. You may not be able to say this, but do you see this notch right here where my fingernail's at? You wanna line that notch up with the notch that's on the dim slot itself. So they only go, these RAM slots only go in one way. So we're gonna populate every other channel. So we're gonna put, oh, I have to turn this ramp around. Huh. See, I just told you. So it only goes in one way. Why is this not one? Okay, there we go. So then we just push this down. You'll hear a click and it won't come back out. Your next memory module. This is dual channel RAM. So where this RAM slot's at, this is channel A. So these first two slots are channel A, these second two slots are channel B. We want to utilize both channels, so we're going to put the other module we have in channel B. There's our RAM. You hear a click. Uh, a couple things to note when you're dealing with RAM and building your PC. You want to make sure that your RAM clears your heatsink. You might have a scenario where the heatsink or the board it might be shorter, and you might need a low profile RAM because the RAM slots might only be, you might only have two DIMMs, and they're smashed up here against the CPU. And your, once you put your heatsink on, then you can't access the RAM. So be very wary of that, depending on what your board layout is and the profile of your RAM. Now we can install our SSD. Um, this is where you want to read the manual of your motherboard or kind of look through it because we have two M.2 slots here. This one is PCI Express. This one is SATA. If you use the SATA one like we're going to do, it might disable one of your SATA connectors on here. So these SATA connectors are, these SATA channels here, one of them shares a SATA channel with this M.2 slot. So to get this open, we're going to put this in. Well, that did me absolutely no good at cutting it open that way. I hate when they do packaging like this. Can they like not do it this way? Like, just rip it open. There we go. All right. Now, here is our beloved hard drive, our SSD. Now, this doesn't have a heatsink on it. This is not an NVMe drive. I don't suspect that this drive will be working enough to where it needs cooling, but SSDs do kind of get warm. So if you have an NVMe SSD, usually they would go right here. And then that motherboard that you have, or that vendor might have like a heat sink that goes over it. This one doesn't have one of those heat sinks. And I don't think it'll be overheating anyway. Because it won't be doing much IO reading or writing. It's just our OS boot drive. You put this in, you're gonna put it in at an angle like that and then you'll push it all the way in and then you'll screw it down which is those two screws that are over here that came with our drive so now we have our two screws you don't want to lose these so we get a screw i would recommend like a little magnetic screwdriver to do this part there we go now we're going to need to get our power supply out. Well, we're gonna to wanna to put our graphics card in, but you wanna do this once you get the board in the case. But we need a video out to test to make sure everything is gonna post. So what we gotta do is we have to put our GPU in right now. And we're gonna hang this off the board a little bit. 
off the box so that we can put this on. Line it up, push it straight down, and that's it. So we have a cable here. Before we do anything else, we have to unpack our power supply. It doesn't matter, we don't have an OS drive yet. We'll get all that later. Open our power supply. This is modular, so I can just open this, or try to open this, or not open this. Did I like miss something? Has everything got to be a challenge when it comes to this thing? Open up our piece of PSU, and we just unpack it quietly. All right, so let's pull up this big power supply. And here's our power supply. As you can see, it's fully modular. We plug everything in. We need main power. So we have to go through all of these cables here and look for a main power. And main power, here's our main power. See this, it's even labeled motherboard. It'll be even labeled motherboard. I don't know why that's not showing up on my camera though. But it'll be labeled motherboard. And the other end's gonna be labeled PSU. We take the PSU end, this end, with PSU. We put it over here that's gonna say our PSU. So when you put it in, it goes just like that. And the other end goes into our motherboard. Now we need um, a cable from the PSU to right here on this port to power the CPU. Thankfully that cable is labeled CPU. So you get two cables for CPU. We only need one. I wonder why you get two. That's weird. And then on the back of this, we look for CPU. And then we plug it into CPU. So this looks like four by four. And these clips only go in one way. So you don't have to worry about inserting them the wrong way or not. They only go in one way. You don't want to lose these cables either at some point down the road. All right. Now we need a power supply, uh, a pin for our GPU. They're all going to say VGA on this, which this should go to the board. So since this video card's only got six and not an eight, you have to find a cable where the six and the eight break apart like this. So then we can just insert this into our GPU. And we insert the other end of this into the PSU, which says, I'm gonna put it in VGA one. All right, now we're at the stage where we can um, test our hardware before we actually install it. So to do that, I've already hacked my GPU to a display. We already have our power supply done. Turn our switch on, which is right here. And then we have to read our motherboard instructions because this is a low end board and we don't have a power button on the board. If you go to a higher end board, you will probably have that power button. But right here where it says H, our PLED, HLED, and power button. So there's two prongs right here. We tap them together and we should have power. Now to make sure we post, we go to our lovely screen and what we're looking for is to see if we have ASUS and see there's ASUS right underneath the sun. And then it's telling me I can go into the BIOS. That tells me that we're posting. So now our next step is to move into case assembly. And now we move on to the building. Now this case is huge, by the way, and these panels are like solid steel. So I gotta pull my panel off. And once you do that, inside your case, you're then presented with this. As you can see inside here, you've got these holes in this motherboard tray. Some cases include a removable motherboard tray. Cheaper cases do not. Um, you won't be using all the holes that are in here. All the ones down here are for full size boards. All the ones on your right side over here are gonna be for EATX motherboards, which is be like server grade boards. This case is pretty huge. We have a micro ATX board. So I'm gonna grab my board over here. 
and set it down in here gently, holding it by the CPU heatsink. Very common thing to do, make sure it's fully attached. You don't want to drop this. Now would not to be the time to be screwing around. And we want to see these holes inside this board. See these holes? I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but there's holes, mounting holes. So we're going to look, we're going to hold it, and we're going to put our screws, our standoffs, which are these guys right here. If you bought a case, it will come with these, and it will come with screws to screw your power supply in. If you're reusing a case like I am, you may or may not have these standoffs, so you want to have a set of these on hand. So we got two right there. Where else do we got one? We got one right here. And I think there's gonna be one right there. And one right there. Now, these are a five millimeter size. So I'm just gonna use this little five millimeter nut driver that I got. Kinda like this, put it in there. And then screw it down in here. Don't screw it, don't crank it down, just screw it till it bottoms out and you're done. Now you have those installed, we double check our positioning by setting the board in here and we're making sure that the holes that can be screwed down are screwed down into. So we got two right here, we've got one right here, one right here, and one back here in the side power supply. Now depending on your case, the one that's way back in here, especially if you have a microwave TX case, your case is gonna end like right here. So this one back in here is really hard to get to. But in this route, this is a large case. There's plenty of room to work. Everything matches, everything's lined up. Oh, there's one right there. I didn't see that one. So let's go. There's one right here. Okay, uh, that's, that's why you double check. So there's one there, one there. And I think we're good. Now, we're going to pop in our IO shield. I lost my IO shield, uh-oh. Oh no, oh, no, it's right here, okay. So here's the IO shield. This just snapped into place back here. As noted earlier, if you have a higher end board than what I got, this will be part of the motherboard and you won't have to worry about it. But. If it's not, make sure you install this in first. Nothing is more annoying than getting everything installed in here to look behind your PC and realize this damn thing is missing. So, it just snaps in, like so. It's supposed to snap in. Oh, there we go. Snap, snap, snap. All right. Then we take our motherboard, and for the final time, we put it in its resting spot by lining up, well, I would say by lining it up with the IO shield. However, my dumbass installed it wrong. This is for the audio port. I put this at the top up here, where it's supposed to be down here. So make sure you orient this correctly. At least it uh, comes out easy. All right. Now, we put our board back in. And you got the, there's gonna be a little bit of tricky rickiness here. But it should slide right on into its IO shield back there. Make sure everything's lined up on the standoffs. And this is where I recommend having your screws and having a magnetic screwdriver. Kind of like my cobalt one right here. Because that way it's magnetic and it won't fall when you're trying to unscrew this down to the board. All right. There we go. Our first screw's in. And there, our motherboard is inside our case. Now that we repositioned, we're gonna take, I know these are ketchup and mustard wires, but this case is like 10 years old. We're gonna connect all of our fans to our fan header on our motherboard. And what you're looking for is you're looking for items that say, case fan or CHA fan. That's what you're looking for when you do it. So then you just take your cabling and you install it. 
So we have our back fan, exhaust fan, connected right here by our CPU. We have our top fan right here. And I connected it up here to the motherboard that said um, for its other um, CPU fan. I think if you had a pump header. We have this giant fan right here, which I could probably get away with plugging it in right here on one of these case fans. Now we have one other thing to do. We have this fan to connect, but this fan should connect right down here on the last remaining motherboard header we have. Um, we can also install our GPU while we're right here. And we can install, well this case has this, I forgot this case has this toolish entry type thing here. So we're gonna step this in here for our lovely GPU, line it up and push down. We're also going to install our extra nick that we have. Just a little thing, look at that. Just a little eeny meeny thing. Eh. I think I should have installed this in first. So we installed our nick. Now this case is somewhat toolless, so I just push these back and they click. That holds my card in place. We do the same thing for this GPU right here. That's it. Now we're gonna put our power supply in. So we put our power supply. We have a power supply, it's got a fan. Make sure that fan points down. Like our case has bent at the bottom here. So we're gonna slide it in here, just like that. And then I'm gonna get a screw and my screwdriver and screw this into its hole. There. Now what we do is we right side it up and we do our cable management. All right, now we're on to the final stages of this build is now we have to do cable management. So we're gonna start by pulling out the cables that we can use. So there's gonna be a cable on your case that says like HD audio. Like HD audio. So we're gonna need that. That's for our front panel um, audio connector. We're going to need our USBs. We've got four ports. So we've got four cables. So there's our USB. This must be the firewire port, which I don't think we're gonna use. So we're just gonna stuff that back down there. And then we have this for the SATA cable for an eSATA, but I don't think we're gonna use eSATA. I think this day and age with flash storage, um, it's not needed. I don't know but I'm gonna skip that part of this build, which leaves all this mess of things. So we've got a power, we've got a reset button, we've got hard drive LED, power LED, and we have a power switch. Now, if you have more of a high-end case, they won't look like this. They'll be more uniformed and potentially look like this. So then we have to figure out Everything our motherboard connects to is down here at the bottom. But right here is where our motherboard stops because these are our standoffs right here. And looking on the other side, we can we can go down here so we can follow this path and have everything come through. The back. And if we do that, let me turn this around. Everything comes up here, and then we just have to connect it all right there. There is room right here, I can put another power supply. Excuse me, not a power supply, but another fan. But I have to hook up all these cables. These still need hooked up as well. And all those are gonna sit down here. This doesn't have a PSU shroud like newer cases this day and age do. And then I have this wonky dunk looking thing there too. All right, so let's go in the back and work our way around. Now let me have an idea of what we can do. All right, now that we're back here, we're just gonna use some zip ties 
and we're gonna try and make like a wire loom through here so that we can have nice neat cable management this cable is annoying and if you have a case full of RGBs or RGB lights and whatnot you'll have even more cables back here we also have to put our hard drive cable in the back here too so let's focus on one thing at a time here let's get this and these I hope are long enough we're gonna go right through here and we're gonna zip tie it to the back of this case like this kinda like that and then that way we can zip tie this down right here and that leaves everything coming out the bottom and out the front so we're just gonna zip tie this like so something's nice and neat and while we're back here we have to install our motherboard power supply too so this end that's marked PSU goes to the PSU which is down here this end goes up here so we're gonna want to snap we're gonna want to tie we're gonna want to like do half a million things all at once here this is where cable management comes into play so we're gonna come over here here's our motherboard we're going to snap this into place They do, some higher end motherboards do make a right angle thing to do this, but we're gonna snap it in our tray. Make sure it's fully seated. And then we're also, while we're up front, we have our PSU that has to go up here as well. So we need to find our CPU cord. Okay, so that's hanging out the back. We have this cable right here, which I'm going to unplug it because I don't just don't like the way it sits. I'm gonna come out the back right here and then I might zip tie it back here and just put this back right here where I had it. Same with this RGB cable. So this way we are replugging our stuff in and we can then have nice neat zip ties okay there's really nowhere to go with this or unless we go at the very bottom and have to ride it down and around I don't like that maybe do a clean look and go up here towards the top can't hide that so that's just the way it's going to be because this comes over here and connects right here like so okay so then we have all of our cabling hidden back here that we need we spin this back around for our cable management back here okay so now Here's our motherboard tray. So we want to zip tie this in here. Um, also, if you're going the cable route, cable management route, another thing to be aware of is newer cases are designed for cable management. Older cases, maybe not so much. So this case back here, I've got about a whole width of my index finger. I've got a whole width of area where I could have cables. So I may be able to smash. So some of these cables like this power cable might be too thick for this side panel to come back on. So let me just, you also might have like rubberized grommets through here, which this doesn't have. Now we have our CPU, which this big cojona guy right here, we can go this way and down, but as you can see, 
if I do that and then straight down, I'm gonna be short. So this one's just gonna kinda have to go this. I might be able to zip tie there and then come straight down. There we go. Now we just have these little itty bitty wires up here, which we can just kind of like loop them, kind of like that. And we can just take them and then zip tie them kind of like right there. We have two other cables to get because we have our hard drive that has to get put in. So we have our hard drive open. This is the SATA cable from the motherboard. So we've got, oh, we got two cables in here. That's awesome. And they both have, well, they both don't. So one has like this right angle connector. That might be usable either right here or over here when we connect it to the board right here. And since we're not gonna go very far and we're gonna switch this around. So this is gonna connect to the hard drive itself and this is gonna connect to the motherboard. It makes it easier. So there's really nowhere to zip tie this to. So we're just gonna connect this into our board somewhere. As a placeholder. So that we know how much slack we really kind of don't really need. Because then this can just get folded like that. And we can plug it into the top drive like that, but we need to have slack for it to come out too, because this has to go out with it. So I don't think we'll cable manage that one. We'll just stuff the extra down here. And to power that drive, we need to set a power connector, which comes from our power supply kit. And we're only gonna need one set of these cables. See how it has like, these are all SATA connectors. There's one, two, there's our third one. This is the end that goes back to the power supply. So we could shove this down here and follow this wire loom up right here. So let's put our drive in so that we know how much cable we can tie up. Spin around to this jalopy looking of a mess. Now this has a toolless drive bay removal. So you just open the flap put your hard drive in. You want the connectors facing this end of the tray. And then you just carefully put this in. And this should, if this plastic isn't burble enough, should um, put itself right in. So it's gonna look just like that with the end that we open right here facing us and the other end facing the side of the case. And we just pull these wires out. And we're gonna put this drive back in here. Listen, damn it. Slide that in and we're done. Cause the other ones probably aren't going to be able to be used. Now let's go back in the back. And here's where our hard drive sits. So this SATA connector that we have right here is gonna go in this first port. And the other cable, this guy, this guy right here, this is a SATA connector. It's gonna go right here on this hard drive. And there is going to be like a little See how that's kind of like an L on one side? So these are orientational. They only go on one way. So you match the L on the connector with the L on the hard drive, and it slides in. We can see, hypothetically, how much cabling we can theoretically do. And that's what we can do. So we can just zip tie that and then zip tie that as far as this goes. However, this drive has to be removable. So we gotta pull this drive all the way out. So we wanna see how much we have available so that we can pull that drive out if needed. 
and work on it. So I don't think I will actually cable manage these. I think we're just going to, I'll cable manage this because that's going to drive me nuts if I don't. As far as this goes, that can stay right there and that's fine. That's it for that side. Now we just rotate it and do the entire other side. Right now we are going to connect these cables to our PSU. And it's just as simple as reading what they are, VGA, VGA, and connecting them in. All right, and that is connecting everything to the PSU. The last thing we have to wire up is this monstrosity of a mess. So let's get re-angled so that we can see inside that board. And I can show you what we gotta do. All right, so as you can see, we have our power switch, hard drive, reset switch, and our power LED. These cables have to connect right here. And this is where it's wise to get out your motherboard manual that came with it and to see how, um, what pins go where. If you have a newer case, you won't have a jumbled mess like this. Power switch is power and ground. So that's gonna go right here. The reset switch is gonna go right below it, which who uses reset switches anymore? It's gonna go, okay, so the reset ground goes right there. Now it leaves hard drive and power LED. And HE LED positive is on, and this manual says positive goes, I guess this man, uh, goes right here. So, and then PLED plus and minus, which are these little guys right here. These are the PLED plus and minus, and then the ground is gonna go right next to it. Listen here, you little bitch. There you go, see? Now, if you have a newer case, you won't have to go through that. Now we zoom out a little bit, because all we have left to do is connect our HD audio and our USB connectors, and these are easy. So right down here where my finger's pointing, right here where my finger's pointing, is two boxes, USB and USB. So we just take these little cables, they go in there one way. See how there's a pin missing right here? And looking down in here, there's going to be a pin missing right here in the lower right corner. So I just orient this in such a way that the pin that's missing is in the lower right corner. And then it goes in the board. And the same with this one in the other USB header. But I'm in a small confined case. There we go. And then all we have to do is look for our HD audio. And all the way over here, let me enhance. You'll see if I can get right here where my fingernail is at, it's gonna be HD audio. So that means this little cable comes all the way over here. And you see right here, missing a pin. And you look at the HD audio, the second pin on the top from the right going back is missing. So that's where this is gonna go. Make sure it's seated all the way down there. And this one is just if you had something different. Maybe your case doesn't support that. So now we have everything connected. Now we have to clean this little area up. I don't have a PSU shroud to hide this behind, so lucky me. Oh, and we also gotta reconnect our graphics card because I disconnected mine when I was doing this down here. So now when we come back, we're gonna be on the other side and we're gonna try and clean this up and hopefully button it up. All right, now that we're back here, we just ever so carefully pull our excess wire through, making sure that on the other side, we do not have any stressed wires. We do not want that. So then these wires, we just take and we can zip tie them. When you run out of zip ties, you just use whatever you got. On the other hand, if you don't really care from cable management per se, then this part and all of this is gonna be really redundant. And you may not have to do it. If you really don't care about cable management. And 
that. This concludes our video. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, well hit that button. But if you didn't like it, well, then you know what to do. And let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about building in a case that's over a decade old with current gen hardware? See, to me, older computer cases are kind of like cars. And as you go back in time or a certain generation, they kind of show the design language, the thought process of the community at that given time. L let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's nice to build in older cases or do you just buy everything new and call it a day? I will see you guys in the next video. And as always, thank you very much for subscribing and for watching even if you've watched the video to this point and goodbye